Hello, dear listener, and welcome once again to the greatest podcast ever created in the history of the universe, the Inforia. Very humble today. Very, very humble. Today. I love humility. <laughs> I'm actually the most humble person who's ever been born. I'm so humble, I never even brag at all. Never Fair. did it even once. <laughs> it's not bragging if it's the truth. That's true, I, I guess. Right. Don't think about it. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to our, you know, pretty good show. I'm Thomas Frank, and I'm here as always with my good friend Martin Bamey. And today we are talking about how to live a less overwhelmed life. If you listened to last week's episode, we had a discussion that sort of terminated in this uh, uh, you know, time where we were dwelling on the fact that it's very easy to take on a ton of commitments in your life and then feel like your life is fragmented and there's no there's no time to focus in on one thing which is something that I know you had as a kid and I had as a kid as well. You know, thinking back to those times we got to wake up in the morning and, and just know like, I'm just going to be playing Pokemon today. That's it. That's all we're doing. Yeah. And so today we're going to expand upon that discussion and talk a little bit about how you can start to cultivate a life in which you are able to focus intensely on one thing for a long period of time, whether it be an entire day or months or weeks or whatever it is. And uh, I know you've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. I've been thinking about this all week as yeah. I uh, live my fragmented life right now. You know, it's 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 fragmented, but uh, it's actually felt a bit more focused recently because I have I have one very specific thing that I'm trying to do right now, which is build this premium Notion template that I've been creating. I've been building it in public on Twitter. And I've had other things I've had to jump in and do. You know, we had a video that we just released today, actually. And, uh, you know, I've had to come in and like, I had to do a couple of edits to get it out. But for the most part, I've been working on this template and it's felt great to just completely immerse myself in one project. And I don't know, feel obsessed about it. So it's yeah. been pretty cool. Yeah, I love when I get a chance to have that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's what's coming up in this episode. Uh, this is the Inforium, though, so... You know, it's a disguised mastermind call that we just publish on the internet as a podcast. Uh, so we have project check-in. And yep. uh, we also have, I, I wanted to share a quote from the YouTube comments from our last episode because we had talked about how I like to listen to audiobooks while I, I write to work and you don't like audiobooks so much, except for in very rare cases. Um, somebody in the comments agreed more with you and said they don't really love audiobooks that much. I think it was, uh, boy, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce that name. Uh, Xiaorul, I don't even know. But this they had this four great for. quote from, what's that? This is what four votes for. You're right. Duh. All right, what happens if I put this name into Forvo? Let's find out. Forvo. You know, unless and, it's like an internet username. I can't see what you're looking at, so I have no idea. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow, you actually found a word not on Forvo. Okay, well then it turns out we... Uh, no, I I got nothing else. It's a commenter on our YouTube channel, and they had this quote from Sir Francis Bacon. Some books are meant to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. That is, some books are to be read only in parts, others to be read, but not curiously. And some few are to be read wholly with diligence and attention. Hmm. And I thought that was a, a good quote that adds context to this whole question of, okay, well, if I'm going to listen to audiobooks, what kind of books should I choose to listen that to is as an audiobook? Good quote from the Baconator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I wasn't expecting to think that was that uh, funny, but... <laughs> yeah. The bacon eater. Uh, okay. But yeah, I mean, like that's how I think about audiobooks. I'm like, okay, some books, I need to sit down. I need to have a pen. I need to be writing notes. I'm not going to go through those as an audiobook. Or if I do, it's going to be a cursory listen, and then I'm going to go and reread it. But um, and I did that with influence. But most books, you know, if I'm going to listen to it as an audiobook, it's, it's like either narrative nonfiction or fiction or just something where I, I have curiosity about it, but I'm not like, okay, I'm going to need it bring this into my life and make it an integral part of what I'm doing in the future. If I'm doing that, I'm going to be, you know, studying it. I'm not going to go buy a JavaScript programming book and listen to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think I treat every single book as if all of its words, like I, tr I feel that way about every <laughs> bit of fiction I read, which makes it very hard to listen to audiobooks. 
all of That's my fair. books are fully digested. Yeah, you were talking about how Get you don't all the like nutrition. to be you don't like to be piloted by someone else through the media you intake. Yeah. Which is, it's something that I'm fine with, but you know, if that's how you feel about fiction, then you're going to resonate a lot more with reading books, playing video games, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anywho, uh, project check-in what's been going on in the last, well, I think it's been a week since we had to yep. push last week's yep. episode forward a week since you were sick. So, well, only a week, but what's been going on? I did put out my pixel art, comb b animation that was uh you know i like it i think it would be cooler if social media didn't insist on compressing it so that the quality wasn't as sharp as i get to see it that's unfortunate but you know it was a little compressed but i wonder hard. if you could like provide a, a link to a full res potentially i didn't have a decision on where to put that i don't know um mm. how often i'll animate in that setting due to the that's compression fair. issue I may animate more so on like pixel art backgrounds and then do stills on photos if for, for the time being, I like to, I don't want to get stuck trying to troubleshoot something and then pause all of my art. But yeah, that's fair. I did that. Uh, I've got another song written I'm and I'm working on new pixel art. I'm planning on putting out a lot more of that. I've sort of pivoting my online attempts at things. I still been waking up at 5am. That's, that's nice. It. That's pretty sweet. Uh, we had a friend visit, so my sleep schedule got a little bit messed up from her mm. visiting, but it was very fun. Our friend Rahima visited from college. So we are hanging out with her. Uh, other than that, I have been hard at work building this template. I don't think I talked about it last episode. So uh, a few weeks ago, I tweeted, feeling cute, think I might turn our Notion content management system into a paid template who's interested. And I got a pretty good response from that. So that tells me that in marketing classes and colleges, they should be teaching that, you know, when you do product validation, figure out your market, you should start that messaging with feeling cute. Yeah. That's the lesson I take from that. That is a canon officially. <laughs> anyway, you know, I've, I've had uh, a really good experience with providing free notion templates over the past year. Uh, specifically the ultimate tasks template that we created that has brought in uh, around, I think 10,000 email subscribers by itself. So that's been pretty cool. And you know, everything I've done so far has been free, but with the, the content management system that we use to plan YouTube and podcasts and blog content, it is expansive. It's incredibly complicated and we've been building it for three years. So I'm like, if I'm going to put this out as a template, I want to charge for it. Um, so I did the, the product validation, you know, a little bit of tweeting, just seeing if people were interested and got a good response. And I thought to myself, this is going to be easy for me to build because we already have it. So it's a low investment in terms of time for me to build this out. Uh, and actually what I have done instead is spend almost every waking hour for the past two weeks building this template other than like time I have needed to use for getting a video out and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out, when you go to build a product and sell it to people and it's the first time you've done it, it's like drinking from a fire hose. So I've been going through just a ton of stuff. I've had to learn like, you know, what the heck is European VAT tax and sales tax and how do you collect that and which e-commerce platform should I use and how do I get people who sign up to buy the product into a community so they can get support and should I hire somebody for support? There's like a million things that I've been learning. And I've also been uh, designing the sales page for it, which is pretty much done. The only thing I need to do now is get the videos made. Uh, right now, there's just placeholder videos on there. But it's been an interesting learning experience because, you know, believe it or not, over the past, well, it is June 1st. So as of this month, I've been creating content on the internet for 11 years since 2010. Uh, over the past 11 years, even though, you know, we've built this full-time business with a team of seven people, we don't sell anything of our own. Yeah. Like nothing. And so let me, let me clarify that. There are some things that we sell. Like I can provide you a link, you can buy a thing and I will get money that is mine. But in every case, somebody else, it's on somebody else's platform. The print version of 10 Steps to Earning Awesome Grades, it's on Amazon. You buy it on Amazon, they take care of everything. The sales tax, the VAT, the whatever, delivery, 
all I got to do is provide you with a link and then I get paid. Uh, the same thing with our merch over at collegeinfogeek.com slash merch. That is uh, number one, completely run by standard, my agency, and it's done through Shopify. So I just get paid, you know, if we sell enough t-shirts, which usually doesn't happen because we don't hawk t-shirts very often. Uh, Skillshare yeah. classes. You know, I'm not really selling you my class on Skillshare. It's a Skillshare membership you're buying and you just have access to the class. So I get paid royalties essentially from that. So this is the first time where I'm like, I am selling it. And yeah, I'm signing up with an e-commerce provider to take payment information. And the one that I'm working with right now, they do act as like what they call the seller of record. So they can pay the European VAT tax for you. But I still have to provide the link and like I'm managing the customer lists and everything. And it's it's a lot to learn. Uh, and anybody that gets into this, like I have massive respect for it because it takes it takes a lot of learning and it's, it feels like, I don't know, it's, it's a big step. It's been cool. Yeah. So known that's better been, I think it was simple. Right. Yeah. And the product development, of course, I can't help myself because I'm sure people would have been happily satisfied if I had just taken what we use and replicated it. But you've seen what we actually developed. You mean There's like, like tripled the power of the thing we currently <laughs> use? <laughs> I think I think it is like a tripling of power. It's because yeah, very we, much what we upgraded. had was like we had a we had a database of our channels. And in there, it had the videos. And then I think I had built like you a project manager view where you could see what was in yeah. progress. The product we built has that, but then it has like an idea capture area and then it has a validation view. So you can like actually sit down and go, is this a good idea that's going to perform well on YouTube? Or was it kind of a dud of an idea? It's got way more powerful project management views. You can see like videos that are late. You can see videos that haven't been paid by your sponsors. There's an SEO keyword research database. If you're trying to be like good with SEO or you're, you, you kind of in like a niche and you want to kind of collect all your subtopics that you want to cover and then do research on those. It's a huge upgrade. Um, I'm looking forward to us using this cause it's, it's a lot yeah. better than what we were using, but that also meant, you know, I, I took a long time <laughs> to, to develop these new features and test them. Um, uh, but all that aside, I'm, I'm really excited to finally launch this. I think I'm going to be launching like beta pricing and a limited number of downloads late next week or early the week after. I really want to launch this week, but I'm traveling at the end of this week and I really don't want to be doing customer support while traveling because I'm almost certain. The only thing I'm assuming here is that I know nothing, Jon Snow, and I'm guessing, you know, if anyone buys it, there's going to be support questions. There's going to be people needing help. So I want to launch it when I'm around and yeah. possibly even hire somebody to help with customer support before I do that. I need to see. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, don't just like, don't put out a, a big code change on Friday. If you're not going to watch all weekend. So uh... what are you talking about? Code changes on Fridays are great. Especially when people depend on your platform to run their own businesses. And then, <laughs> I feel yeah. like this has happened to like Amazon all kinds of other places. Anyway, that's been uh that's been my project check-in. I've also been doing pretty darn good with workout consistency lately. So nice. Pretty happy with the results there. My goal right now is to hit a thousand pound powerlifting total between bench squat and deadlift, and I think I'm like 50 pounds away. So I'm pretty stoked to finally hit that. It's been a goal of mine for years, but I've never had the consistency uh in training. Or I've just injured myself and lost a bunch of gains and strength over and over again. So working with my coach, he's now like, hey, you need to fix your form. Otherwise, you're going to injure, injure yourself. And also, hey, you need to work out. Here's the schedule. And those two things have made it so I'm actually making progress, which is pretty sweet. Cool. Yeah. All right. We are going to get into the main topic, the main event of this week's episode, which is a simple question. How do you live a less fragmented life or a less overwhelmed life? I suppose we should say. Um, There's a lot we could talk about you, here. You run the defragmenter. Oh, is that what, is there Problem a defragmenter for solved. life? Maybe. I think a defragmenter for life is to hire like some sort of drill instructor. I was going to say life coach, but no, I think you need a drill instructor here who comes into your life and he just tells you to quit everything that doesn't matter. Well, I mean, like planning Jorgen fewer Von things is, is truly 
at its core, the actual simple solution to this is you can't give yourself more time. You can only free it from expectations. Yep. But, you know, obviously in practice, it's not that easy to just do that. Yeah, I think uh, I think the real thing, and can you move your mic a little bit more towards you? Because I think it got off skew a bit. Weird. There we go. Now you sound nice and crispy. Is that a is that a quality of sound crispy? I blame uh, a gust of wind that came through. That sounds probable, especially vents. since you have glass windows preventing. I leave the them air from wide outside. open all oh, okay. day long. Yeah. Is that why I hear sirens? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, you're right though. Like we don't have the ability to gain more time, at least not for real, but we do have yeah. the ability to choose at least to some degree of control, this is varying for every person, but we have the ability to choose what we do with that time, what we fill that time with and how many commitments we take on. Uh, so the thing that I was thinking about all week is that whole idea from Deep Work by Cal Newport of the whole any benefit approach and how if you want to live a less fragmented life, you have to have that philosophy and that value take center stage and be more important to you than this idea that if I do this, I'm going to have any benefit. And like, I literally failed this this morning because on Twitter, there was someone who's like, Hey, I'm making a notion community on discord who wants in. And I'm like, Oh, and then, and then I got in and I'm like, I realized, why did I do that? There, oh, no. there is a benefit. There's a reason why I decided to do this. I'm like, well, I want to become more part of the notion community. And I'm obviously launching a paid product on notion. It would be very beneficial for my business. And that may be a good justification there. And for me launching a product at this very moment in time, it may be truly justified, but it does go against the idea that I want to have less fragmentation in my life. So literally this morning, I have a personal example of just how difficult it can be to avoid the temptation to add a new obligation or a new channel or a new social kind of thing to your life because there are always going to be benefits to it. Yeah. And, I've been yeah. I've been thinking about this all weekend, honestly. And I and I cut a few things. And Did I you? reprioritized some stuff. And it's very difficult because everything does sound fun or cool and you want to do it all, but life is short and what can I do about that? Mm hmm. I feel you. Yeah. It's like, I think it's all a matter of, uh, of figuring out your priorities. And yeah. I, one thing that I have particular trouble with is, you know, like looking at my peers, people I look up to and separating my true desire based priorities, like the things I truly care about and love to do from uh priorities that seem based on like guilt or keeping up with the joneses in some way yeah yeah i've got like you know online peers and friends who will publish more videos than i do or they're like tweeting more often than i do and doing all these things and, and they're playing make number go up very well and uh, then i'm like well i should be playing make number go up very well too but when i ask myself like what, what do i want to come out of this and it's just one of those things I've known for a long, a very long time, but I have to constantly remind myself, I don't need another million subscribers or another, you know, I don't need to get my Twitter to a hundred thousand, whatever, like be nice, probably good for business. But what I care about more is being able to sink my teeth into learning projects. That is what I love to do. I also love being able to spend time with my friends. Like I love those things. So how can I build a sustainable business where both myself and my team are well provided for, we're growing, but I, I've carved out time for those kind of things. Like just w before we started recording this podcast, I showed you uh, that piece of code that I mean, my friend and I worked on that pulls in YouTube data into Notion using the API. Like it would be, in terms of business, stupid for me to spend time on that because I'm not a developer. I could hire a developer to do this. I could have you do it. You're, you know JavaScript. But it was fun. Like it was really interesting. And, you know, this like looking at my priorities, like that is something I really prioritize is, is those discoveries and just constantly pushing myself, learning new things. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, when push comes to shove and I'm prioritizing things that simply make number go up, probably need to lose out to me having time to learn things. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like number go up has a purpose, but only to an extent and only if it specifically lines up with your goals. Like not every business model needs to care about numbers. Yeah. You could actually, you could actually do make number go up, but not make it go. You could succeed with like a thousand followers on something. If your goal was merely to find clients and they were within Mm -hmm. the thousand, like you don't, it becomes really easy to try to compete because obviously all of humanity is on the internet doing whatever. Well, not everybody, literally. A lot of us are naturally competitive and for all the benefit that comes from these social networks we use, like they are 100% designed to have us comparing ourselves to one another. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's got certain benefits, but it's got things that aren't healthy about it. So you have to figure out how do I prioritize these things? I don't know. Maybe I need a print out on like the wall, prioritize learning, prioritize time to sink deeply into something. I really liked uh, to go back to deep work for a second, how Cal says he uh, structures his year where he does like six months of super in-depth research. And then, or was this him or was this, uh, maybe it it was a example person in the book. It was mentioned in the book. I can't, I can't remember if it was him or not, but uh, he talked about, you know, someone him or some other professor who did six months of research and then did six months of teaching. Now that I'm remembering it, it may not have been him. It may have been an example person he knew when he was explaining. uh, There was, there were like four different types of like schedules he talked about in the book. And this one was like the bi yearly schedule where it's like half your time during the year is spent on one kind of thing. And then the other half is spent on going and doing more social things and teaching. And obviously that's, that's a configuration that is pretty hard for a lot of people to get, you know, being in the position of a tenured professor lends you that ability apparently. But uh, I've been thinking like, well, how could you get a version of that in your own life? And I know one thing you wrote down in the notes here was like having theme days. So that's not like theme six yeah. months, but you know, well, and then the, the whole goal book thing, that I was doing was themed half of month. Oh yeah. That was themed two weeks. Yeah. Are you still doing that or have you tweaked it? I am currently not because the reason I started that was to sort of restart my ability to figure out what I care about, get back onto some good habits. And the thing is at this point, I kind of just know what I want. And I feel Mm. everything kind of feels clear and I feel generally happier. And, you know, like I I had actually developed that. I'm fairly certain the same year that my dad died. Like I was just like, I need to figure out how to start over. Let me find a clever way to track it so I can make sure I'm going in the right direction. And I think I did. So currently I'm experimenting with letting this month just go by and Mm -hmm. see if I can sort of live without the rules. And I think honestly, that's, something that I would recommend for this is uh, a lot of like us, we are, and a lot of people that might listen to this are the, I want task management systems. I want intricate control and fancy plans because essentially I am trying to force future me to win whether they want it or not by setting all the rules here and assuming it will go according to plan. It's a great strategy. But there is a point where I think you've gone too far. And what I was doing was really good for several years. And recently, the only things that I really want to focus on were things that, like my art, like the pixel art, the music, the the photography that I'm really enjoying doing, things like reading. And I realized that in those systems currently, because I'm already sort of functioning and want to do them by myself. I should not put intrinsically motivating things into a system because I turn them into a terrible, Mm. horrifying chore. And then I don't do them. Like I kept making this intricate. I had a, I tried redoing a morning routine that went from like five to noon because I demanded that I had some (laughs) of everything that I want to do in it. Obviously this never lasted longer than a day or two. 
So then I was like, okay, okay, maybe I can't read and study every language and practice the languages and do some art and pixel art and, and also do my job and also eat and also exercise and also meditate and also go outside every day. Maybe that's ridiculous. Okay, I'll cut back some of it. What if then on Saturdays I go on a photo trip and on Sundays I, I just do several hours of language practice and reading fiction and it scrapped that before I even made it to the Sunday because I was like, <laughs> wait a second, now I kind of hate the idea of Sunday. Yeah. That sounds horrifying coming up. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I kept trying to plan. Like I took, I took the things that I want to use to relax or that are just fun and I turned them into something I can fail at. <laughs> which is just not helpful right now. I don't need yeah. the, um, so I still have like exercise and do stuff like that, but I seem to have built those habits, you know, like I did the habit tracking system long enough. That's a habit now. It's good. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate goal, right? Is that eventually some of those long-term habits, you just do them now. Yeah. And you don't need to force it until you're dead. But yeah, I don't like I'm the idea of break. trying to, to system of systematize, the things you love like i'm yeah. not putting read fiction on my morning routine and when i ride my bike to work i don't have like you have to listen to the audiobook and get through a certain amount like there have been a couple of days recently where my head was just buzzing with too many ideas and there's like there's no way i'm gonna listen to this audiobook and pay attention so i just listen to music it's fine yeah you know yeah like it, it didn't work in in practice every time i tried to do it mm -hmm. you know my brain said martin that's a horrible plan don't do it don't, don't even bother trying to stick to that. So I've yeah. cut back. I've sort of refocused. I even took the language stuff off of like my social media bios and retuned to that to sort of remind myself of my current priorities. You know, yeah. I have to cut back and say some things are important and that mm -hmm. super difficult. Yeah. I wonder if it's also worth like making a note of the consequences that come from going too far with, you know, obligations, fragmentation, too many routines, like I was thinking the other day when I released this video that just came out, which holy crap is it's doing very well. Uh, looks like some of the work we put in is paying off. Um, as I was editing it and, you know, doing up the final edits, I was like, well, I should turn the script into a blog post too, because then we could maybe rank for the keyword and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, cool. Any benefit approach. I'm thinking about that right now. What are the potential consequences of this? Well, if I do this, if, if I do this, I'm going to think it's going to take me 15 minutes and then it's actually going to take two hours because once I get into the task, I'm going to realize, oh, you know, to do it right, there are more things than I anticipated. Yeah. And I'm going to take two hours away from something I care about more, which could be, you know, working on the product, making the sales page, demo video, any, anything like that. Or I'm signing myself up for more hours in the chair. And I know from experience, when I t when I spend too many hours in the chair, I will get chronic back pain. I will skip workouts. I will do all kinds of stuff that will cause me actual physical pain and reduce my health. That's a real consequence to allowing this extra thing into my life. Is it going to happen? Not guaranteed, but it's a very possible thing, especially if I keep doing things like this. Well, if I do a blog post, I should do a tweet thread too. And I should probably like turn this into Instagram content and all kinds of stuff. And you know, it doesn't mean that that shouldn't happen, but what it means is if that's going to re result in me fragmenting my own life too much, then if it, if it is going to happen, the only way in which I should let it happen is if I hire out for it. Yeah. You know, and then in that case, the downside is, well, it costs money, but it may be worth it. I can actually calculate an ROI on that. Uh, there is no possible ROI on guaranteeing more chronic back pain and skipped physical activity. No, I had been skipping meals too. So yeah, apparently <laughs> physical health is definitely one of the first things that gets sacrificed when you're particularly ambitious about things. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey there. It's your old pal, Thomas. We're taking a break from the main content to pay some bills. This week's episode of our show is sponsored by our good friends over at Curiosity Stream, which if you haven't heard before, is the best place on the internet to get your hands on documentaries, on nature, on science, on technology, society. If you want to watch high quality documentaries and you know boost your knowledge that way, Curiosity Stream is the absolute best place 
for it, especially because they are partnered with the streaming service that myself and a bunch of other great educational creators built, Nebula. On Nebula, you can get ad-free versions of this show, of my YouTube channel's videos, and for the videos and podcasts of tons of other great educational creators. Wendover Productions, Real Engineering and Real Science, uh, MKBHD, there are a ton of your favorite educational creators on the platform covering film analysis, covering engineering, covering uh, math, all kinds of amazing stuff on Nebula. And on Nebula, there are sections to the videos we're uploading called Nebula Plus sections. In fact, the video that I just uploaded on my main channel today, which is called How to Wake Up Early Without Feeling Tired, has a whole bonus section with an additional tip that I found very effective for getting myself out of bed, and you can only see it on Nebula. And the great thing about Curiosity Stream is that when you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get Nebula bundled for free. So just go over to curiositystream.com slash pod and sign up. And you're not only going to get 26% off their annual uh, subscription rate, which is the best deal that you can get on the internet. We actually made sure that it is, but you also get Nebula for free along with it. And to be clear, this isn't a free trial of Nebula. You get Nebula access for free as long as you're a member on Curiosity Stream. And again, on Curiosity Stream, you're going to find tons of amazing documentaries. There's this great one with Nick Offerman called History of the Home. There's even one with Chris Hadfield and the Space Station. So check it out if you want to learn and grow your brain and get access to all these documentaries and support what we're building over on Nebula. Once again, curiositystream.com slash pod to sign up, get 26% off and get Nebula access. Big thanks as always to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this episode and supporting our show. And another huge thanks goes out to our second sponsor this week, which is brilliant. If you want to improve your mastery and your skills in the areas of math, science, and computer science, and if you also want to become a better problem solver, better able to summon all your experiences and creatively solve novel problems, Brilliant is an excellent platform to spend some of your time on. They have over 60 courses covering all of math, actually, from the basics of number theory to algebra and calculus to statistics and probability and Bayes' theorem and all kinds of crazy stuff like that to science classes from the classical mechanics to um, gravitational physics and even computer science classes covering algorithms, data structures, search engines. If you want to learn deeply in any of these areas, Brilliant is a great place to be because they structure all their classes with active learning in mind. So instead of just sitting back passively intaking information like you would with a book or a lecture-based class, you are getting involved almost immediately because they have these sequences of bite-sized problems that they, uh, they kind of put in to the content that they're teaching you, which means that you're almost immediately solving those problems and using what you're learning. And that keeps happening consistently throughout the entire course, no matter what course that you're taking. So if you want to start learning for free today, you can go over to brilliant.org slash Inforium and sign up. And if you're one of the first 200 people to use that link, you'll even get 20% off your annual premium subscription when you decide to subscribe to it. Uh, Big thanks as always to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode as well. And let's get back into the show. I saw this email in my inbox this morning from uh, Tiago Forte, who does like the building a second brain course and uh, Forte Labs. And the whole point was like, he was, he was saying that personal productivity or interest in it is like a season of life and you, you get past it eventually. And uh, Mm -hmm. I was just reminded of that when you said like, well, I'm going to try not using my system right now. Just see how things are going. Maybe I'm not in that season. Yeah. So what I think it is, and you know, I could be wrong about this as I get older, but I think it's a recurring season. Um, and I've often thought about my life as a pendulum. So, you know, with, with anything like maybe my physical health or my publishing schedule or, you know, time spent with my, my significant other or my friends, like there's always a pendulum and I want it to be in the middle, but because it's a moving pendulum, it's swinging one way or the other. So maybe when it comes to work-life balance, right now the pendulum has swung too far in the direction of work. Sometimes it swings too far in the direction of uh, personal life. Like, for example, when I decided to play the entire Ori and the Wolf of the Wisps game in two days, like, that was a weekend, so I don't feel too bad about it. But I did play video games for, for 15 hours over the course of two days, which maybe is a bit of pendulum in the personal corner instead of balanced. And when I find the pendulum has swung way far of center in one way or the other, that is when I know it's time for me to figure out some kind of system I can employ to bring it back to equilibrium. 
But if my pendulum is in the equilibrium part, I don't need a crazy system, you know, or maybe I have less reliance on it. And if you've gotten to a point where the pendulum isn't constantly swinging out of equilibrium one way or the other, then yeah, you may not need some kind of system that takes up your time and attention and further fragments your life, to be honest, to keep yourself balanced. Maybe you've just learned how to keep yourself balanced. Yeah. So like, I I think my priorities are clear is the thing and the system mm -hmm. helped write them down in case I forgot, but I wake up and I just know what I need to do that day. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. So like, and if you have a less fragmented life, that's even easier. If you have a ton of different obligations like I do right now, then there may be something that, that slips through the cracks. Uh, if my life were literally build this notion template and that's it, I wouldn't need, you know, maybe you need a to-do list for the different parts of the template and things I should remember to do, like connect yeah. the convert kit integration so to forget. Gumroad and stuff like that. But um, if that was all I had to do, I wouldn't need a bunch of other things. But you know, like for better or for worse, I have a life where we've got the YouTube channels, we have the podcast we're recording right now. There's a blog. I've got the team relationships to take care of. There's you know stuff we need to check with the website servers and all kinds of stuff there. Stuff I have with standard. Like there's a lot of fragmentation there. So while I'm in the process of trying to simplify that, I think in many cases for me it's going to be in terms of delegation. I do need systems to keep track of things just to remind me like, hey, you said you'd do this, so do it. You know, but yeah, the, the less fragmented you allow your life to be, the less you have to rely on you know incredibly detailed systems that capture. Yeah. Everything. So, do you think that the idea of themed days would be helpful in managing all of the different things that you currently uh, need to do? They probably would be. It's going to be hard for my brain to go, "Yes, I will agree to themed days," because right now all I want to do is work on the product, and if I were to say, "Okay," Tomorrow, oh, yeah, I will not work on the product. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's not the right answer. It may be the right answer. And maybe it's like school where I, you know, I have to do this thing and that thing. Um, but I, I, I guess, yeah, what I'm saying right now is my brain doesn't want to agree to that. Yeah, I was thinking about, I almost settled on the idea before I just drastically shortened my morning routine so that it was feasible for me. But I almost settled on the idea of maybe having, you know, because often, often we might say, if you want more time to do the things you want to do and and you don't want to feel behind on things, find your own time where people don't expect things of you. Usually early in the morning, late in the Mm -hmm. evening, something like, you know, like an hour of your own time that's for you. And then don't plan too many things because then you're one of the people who's putting expectations on you in that hour. But (laughs) that's a good way to think about it. But what if you like took that? Let's, what if there was a morning routine that had the basics, you know, probably eat or brush your teeth or whatever. Maybe you had a different thing you dedicated. Maybe Mondays you read. Maybe Tuesdays you did this sort of thing. Like you could split your hobby throughout the week too or your personal mm. time or your chores or job is a little more difficult. That's the one where I feel like it's unrealistic anytime I've tried to do a theme day for work because work, yeah. sometimes you just need to do the thing that's not today. Yeah. I mean, like I, I have to put out fires a lot or I'll have people demanding my time. Um, so that's something that I need to, to keep working on. The, the answer for me is probably more delegation. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people like they would love to do theme days for work. I know Anna's talked about this before. Uh, you've talked about it before, actually. Now that I'm remembering back, well, it sounds but a cool lot of times like it just it makes it in, in practice it's hard to put into into practice. I guess to make it a reality. Maybe if you had more lead time on stuff, it'd be easier. Maybe, or maybe if it just if there wasn't like a team, you know, mm-hmm. like if you're doing your own thing and people don't. Maybe you don't have a lot of interactions with your work, then it might be yeah. easier. But my problem is always like, okay, so today's going to be a code day. Then somebody needs me to look at some mm-hmm. writing or to look at a video or to do something. And I'm like, well, those are more important than the thing I was going to code today. So yeah. So I can't just say, <laughs> sorry, it's coding day. That's not going to help anything. It's not realistic that I can just do that right. as a team. Yeah, I guess the the thing with me is if I have a thing that I'm doing, like I want to get it done. 
So, and maybe that's why I've never had much success with having multiple video projects going at once. Like I've just never been the guy who films a ton of videos all at once and then like pans them off to an editing pipeline. It's been like, let's do this project and then let's move to the next one. And it's been like that for six years. The only time I've ever been able to do a ton of videos in a batch was when I worked with Crash Course. And that was because it was like, I signed a contract. You're going to fly out to Missoula yeah. and you're going to film five videos and then you're going to do five more the next day. And that's what the trip is. So they have to be written. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, maybe the, uh, maybe the only way I could solve this for myself is book a trip to LA or something. And that's where the studio is. And it's like, cool. That's, that's the two days I'm going to be there. I better have 10 videos. Otherwise I'm wasting the money to go there. But I don't know. I've also never been that motivated by money. I'm more motivated by just like maintaining personal relationships and that kind of thing. Yeah. So give me one second. You heading out? Yeah. Okay. I will see you later. Bye. If you, yeah, you can do that. Ew, gross. Oh, Cut oh. this out. Oh, it's Martin. Hi, Martin. Yeah. Oh, hey there. We're podcasting. Hey, look, I'm not focused hey, breathing. I thought you were talking with like, Oh no, I'm podcasting. Okay. I'll turn my mic off. Okay, bye. Or don't we're we're off. we're including that, right? We're <laughs> just we're keep it we're just gonna keep it in. <laughs> yeah, now you said it. I don't care if we keep it in, it's fine. You showing affection? Ew. They're gonna For the person that you're gonna marry? Ugh. Yeah, gross. <laughs> um but yeah, like I just when I wanna get a thing done when I start it. So right now my brain's like okay, yes, you have the podcast. And yes, there's probably some emails you need to respond to later, but work on the product, get it finished, go to the video for the sales page. Yeah. I don't know. You have to find the time to like obsess over the thing you're excited about. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really the most difficult thing and why I kept having to cut out things. Cause every morning I'd have like that seven hours thing planned. I would yeah. just do one thing that I was really excited for. And I realized I was ruining that for myself. Yeah. I've always respected my friend Matt Givenisi because he has a, a habit of doing like intense 30 day or one week, just giant projects all at once. So the, I think the one that still Sounds impresses great. me the most is he made an entire album in 30 days. And it's it's on Spotify. We could put it in the show notes. It's Matt Givenisi. The album's called Entrepreneur. My brother actually has a guest vo a guest verse on it. Uh. I'm in the music video for one of the videos, but the dude made 10 songs from lyrics to instrumentation to doing the rapping. Like he did it all other than a couple of guest spots. And I think he got one person to play saxophone in one track. Other than that, he did everything and a music video for one of the videos in 30 days, like super impressive to me. And I know that he like he, that burned him out. He was exhausted at the end. I think he said he would never do something like that again, but it was still <laughs> like super impressive. And, you know, even if it's not something crazy like that, like I'm going to make an entire album in one month, it just, there's just an allure to, I'm going to do this thing. And that's all I want to do until it's done. It's just, I don't know. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I want more ability in my life to do that. I would so, like to do that more. In 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 all of our cases, I think better. the answer to enable this is to probably cut some of the things we're doing. You know, ask yourself, are the benefits I'm getting from this really worth it? What are they really adding to my life? Um, you know, and, and keeping the priority in mind when you're presented with new opportunities, especially ones that are ongoing. Do you want to do another podcast, Martin? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Remember we came up, we had another podcast idea. And then we're like, well, should we just run this podcast concurrently with the Inforium? And now I'm doing this episode and I realize like, no, no, <laughs> well, Maybe the prioritization is so that. hard and that's, you just got to be ruthless over and over. And I still do have some daily habits that, that I, I do. I'm just not tracking them as thoroughly because it's okay. The, like the, the question I had to go through and ask over and over, like four times before I got to the root of the truth was what is truly necessary mm -hmm. in a day? So 
like like if I wanted to make sure that I eat every day in general, that's necessary. Do I have to eat breakfast by a certain time? No, but that might take me three times to figure it out. Okay, I focus better if the living room is clean. But what happens if I start trying to set up a, you know, a crazy task management chore list that keeps everything in perfect condition? I will fail it hard or I will mm-hmm. succeed and sacrifice more important things. So the, is the living room truly necessary? No, it doesn't really matter. In fact, yeah, I found almost nothing is truly necessary every single day. I kind of have a different life every day. Mm-hmm. Work is necessary, but which kind of work? I don't know. Like it, I suppose I got so used to systems that I wasn't comfortable confronting the sort of unpredictableness of life. I can't actually box it all in perfectly. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's easiest when you have like a, like obligations that make you have to do certain things. So like for me, um, I do think exercise is necessary. That one I do think is necessary. I won't, I won't go to the gym as frequently as I should if I'm just trying to manage it myself. So that's, that's why I work with my coach. That's one of the few things where it's like, if I don't do this, is there obvious and definite, like, uh, not necessarily damage in always a harmful way, but, but damage sort of to your goals. Exercise is one. There are long-term cumulative things that are bad if you don't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. But like, is it necessary that I exercise every day at 8 a.m.? No. So what's not yeah. necessary there is the time the time period. And I, I ended up cutting reading. I cut meditation. I cut all of this. And it took me like four or five iterations for me to even come to that. I just like went around, walked around outside and thought about it for a long time. Yeah. Interesting thing with the working with my coach. So when we're thinking about like what's necessary, usually we have to we have to think about like what are our goals. And the funny thing is like forever, I, I've had like, you know, levels I would like to have gotten to when it comes to lifting, but it was never strong enough to get me to go do it. Like some guys, they they care that much. They, you know, they want to get into the gym. Women too, they want to get into the gym because they have goals. And like those goals are what pushes them to get in. But for me, like getting bigger or looking a certain way or hitting my powerlifting total, whatever it is, none of that was ever strong enough to make me go. But working with my coach, I have the consistency and it's gotten to the point where like, I'm excited now to hit those goals. So I think it's, you know, I still have the, the accountability angle. That's really the thing driving me to, to get it done and to be as uh, consistent as I am. But given that reality, I start to care more about my goals and I'm excited to go. So that's, that was kind of an interesting result there. Well, Starting think, from a position of discipline rather than, well, you're going to do it if you want it bad enough. Well, you've started from a position of discipline, but also, first of all, it's a, it's a discipline you respond well to. And sometimes the fact is that like your own checklist simply isn't going to be enough mm-hmm. because in your, in your heart, you know that you could skip every requirement you set for yourself and yeah. you can't fire yourself from your habits or something. But now that you've got this consistency, you don't have to rely on sort of uh, just the willpower. You're starting to get excited. And I think the excitement for goals in part comes from the belief that it's possible, that you are actually going to do it or are likely to do it. And you know, that excitement may not be there at first if you don't frame the goals right and you don't have the proper motivation behind it and you don't have like the guidance. If if somebody just says, hey, I want to be like a game dev and they don't have a specific next step, that goal's too big. They're not going to be excited. Mm-hmm. They're going to need to force it. They'll probably burn out. But if you find the next step or you find the right guidance, like a teacher or a coach that can pull you just to the next step and it feels like realistic, like, you might let yourself get excited. So yeah. otherwise you let yourself down if you get excited and then the goal was too vague. I think that's what it is. I think it's like I have direction and I have the accountability. So I know that the consistency is almost guaranteed because someone expects something of me. 
So because of that, now I have the freedom to take the goal seriously and be excited for it. Whereas in the past, I've like, I just, I know from my own experiences that it's just not something that I care about enough to completely manage on my own. I have other things that I definitely manage on my own, but that one in particular, it's like, yeah, I would like to be there, but it's just not enough where yeah. I'm going to get up and do it all the time. You well, know? And that's or maybe important. It, and maybe in a vacuum, if I had nothing else going on, I would. But the reality of life is as much as we'd like it to be some, you know, super focused, only do one thing ever. We have a lot of things going on. We have relationships, we have jobs, we have schedules. Yeah. And it's, it's usually that it's not like, oh, I'm too lazy to go to the gym and lift in a certain program in a vacuum. It's I'd much rather sit here and build this product. Or I feel like I have all these obligations that I, you know, committed myself to. So this is what gets cut unless I have someone saying, don't you dare cut it. Yeah. But even with that though, you like, you have to prioritize which thing is truly worth that level of being certain that it will happen. Because if you tried mm -hmm. to do that and you had a coach that, you know, forced you to read fiction and meditate and exercise <laughs> and like do all these things, you would just burn out immediately and you would have yeah. fraction, you would have uh, fractional focus mm -hmm. for all of them. That was what I learned early on when I got into using B minor. Cause you know, I did the oh, first yeah, goal yeah. on B minor and I'm like, Oh, Hey, you know, there's like money on the line. I'm doing this thing. Cause if I don't do it, I'm going to get charged money. I'm just going to add a bunch more goals. And you know, to, at a certain point, yeah, there might be money on the line, but you start to burn yourself out. The sword of Damocles yeah. can only motivate you to a certain point. You know, like, I think if you find the right things that are worth the harsh strictness, you'll succeed at it probably, or you're more likely to. And I think it's less overwhelming when you actually believe you can succeed at what you're doing in life right now. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a very good point. Cause I definitely remember, you know, thinking back before I had a coach, am I ever going to get to a thousand pound powerlifting total knowing like it just isn't going to happen. But now I'm like, I know what's going to happen. It's just a matter of me following the guidance. And over time, it will happen. Yeah, like it's it's realistic. It might actually happen. I mean, what is oh the feeling of overwhelm is, you know, intricately tied together with anxiety. And mm -hmm. if I wake up and I feel really overwhelmed and anxious, usually that's because I don't actually believe that I can do the things that I think I have to do today. I yeah. see this big list of tasks, whether I've written it that morning, whether it's just floating around in my head, whether it's in a system, I look at it. I don't actually believe I can do it to some level, at least well. Mm -hmm. So now I'm overwhelmed because I'm going to spend all day sort of failing myself and that's going to feel bad over and over and over. Or if I wake up late and I insist on doing the things in order, now all of the things are late. So first of yeah. all, if you're late to one thing, <laughs> see if you could just put that at the end and be on time the rest of the day instead. Mm -hmm. But when I'm really busy, when, you, you know, we're working on a video uh, or, or, you know, something happens on the website or I spend, I've spent just hours and hours and hours and hours working. I've, I worked like 30 hours in two days. I did not feel overwhelmed, not in the slightest on those two days because I knew what I was doing and I thought I could succeed. There was no part of me thinking I'm always failing. Ah, I'm so bad. I hate myself. This is too much to think hmm. about. I was succeeding and succeeding feels good. Even if I'm busy. Yeah. You know what? I've been kind of a similar situation recently, like building the sales page for this product or building the, the template itself. I was working probably 15 hour days. Like I spent 15 hours on a Saturday work on the sales page, but I didn't feel overwhelmed because I think it was one, I, it was a Saturday. So I'm like, I'm giving myself permission to not have to do anything else. This is all I'm doing. And I know I can do it. Like I understand every bit of what I need to do. I just, I, you know, I need to write copy. I need to place the elements. I need to, uh, do the responsive design for mobile phones. I need to test it out, but I know exactly how to do all these things or I know the path at least to getting to completion on them. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel overwhelming.
I think it's just when we have like a zillion things and like like you said, you kind of know that you're not going to be able to get it like, all done. I know that I'm lying to myself essentially yeah. about what what today is and I mm-hmm. and it's just hard to come to terms with okay, truthfully, I can do this and that and I'm probably going to be mentally checked out after I do that. So yeah. this list is possible. You know, like I'll, I write down that morning routine, all the ones that didn't work. It works mm-hmm. out on the clock. There is time. There is plenty of time. Maybe I'll even succeed at it one day. I can do all yeah. of those things. But I feel less overwhelmed doing an hour of one thing than 10 minutes of six things. Like mm-hmm. the amount of, it just feels like, oh God, that's so many things. And if, I, if I'm late on one of them, the rest are now, I got to do task switching, that context switching that disrupts my focus over and over. I know I'm not going to be able to focus on number six. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be dead by that point mentally. Just, I can't do it. And when yeah. I think I can do it, I can focus all day long and I will forget meals. And that's not good, <laughs> which is why one of my important <laughs> things is making sure the kitchen is set up to where I'll actually eat. That's, that mm-hmm. is necessary, turns out. But when I the think other- I can do it, time is no problem. Mm-hmm. The other thing is when when you're not sure you can do it, at least in my personal experience, it's very easy for the thing that gets cut to be time with your friends or time with your fiance or girlfriend or like I've had talks with Anna where she's like, you know, you've been just working nonstop lately and not hanging out with me. And that's often because I'm like, well, I've scheduled all these things for the day and I think I can get them done by five. And then of course I can't. Yeah. But they all feel urgent. So if I simplify my life and really ask myself, like, how much does this matter? How much does this matter? I can get to a point where I'm like, I wake up. I know I got to do these things. They should be done. Realistically, what I should probably do is is schedule something for myself that I think I can get done by like four because of course it's going to take an extra hour. But then when the evening rolls around, there's no like, oh, sorry, I have to finish this. Nope, it's, I'm going to hang out with you. Yeah, like if I haven't finished it by this point, mm-hmm. th- is it really important that it happens in the next five hours compared to tomorrow? Yeah, so living a less fragmented life could also help you you know, do better with your personal relationships because there's fewer times where you're going to feel overwhelmed with things that you thought you would get done earlier, but now are still left undone. And now you're tempted to push off social engagements or just casual time hanging out with your significant other or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever it is. I've, I've definitely canceled stuff I wanted to do because I felt like I can't, I'm supposed to do this thing. And honestly, mm-hmm. I was still looking at a list of tasks I wasn't going to complete anyway. Yeah. You know, I just thought, what if I finish it once and for all? And mm-hmm. after today, I'm going to be so, I'm just going to be free. I've done it. I've succeeded yeah. and now I will never be overwhelmed again. That, this that is never uh, happens. I just I'm more sad the next day because I cut the things I wanted. <laughs> this is part of the reason I I coded the uh, cold tasks thing into ultimate tasks. Yeah, like that's if, a great idea a, for a feature. That's if a task is more than two weeks overdue, it leaves everywhere and goes to a cold tasks list. It's way more it's realistic. Like, At that point, it yeah. doesn't seem to matter functionally. It's de facto yep. unimportant. Yeah, and it's like it's there. You didn't lose it. You know, if it's more than two weeks overdue, it's going to be in the cold task. You can go see it. But did you really need to do it in the first place? If it's been two weeks since you were supposed to do it and, you know, your life hasn't ended so far, maybe, you know, maybe you need to buckle down and reprioritize it. But I think in many cases, you you put something down, you're like, I should do that. And then it didn't get done because it really wasn't that important. Well, like there's a lot of those shoulds. You know, mm-hmm. and should is inherently a judgment word. You're you're yeah. implying some better or perfect or right version of you that does these things. And that's very often not going to be fair to yourself. I mean, what should anything? Uh, you know, there are a few legitimate shoulds, I would say, when it comes to things as, you know, as simple as our own hobbies or projects or tasks. Some things you should do, yes. But when you start listing too many, you start it becomes this sort of idealized, my house will be clean at all times. I will be fit. I will, <laughs> be, I will be so smart because I'll read all the greatest nonfiction books. I will also enjoy fiction because, you know, I'm fun. I'll get to play all the games. It becomes like, what is the perfect me that can do everything I've ever thought was cool? And you yeah. shouldn't do all of that. 
I remember being younger and waking up and thinking like, today's the day that I become the perfect version of myself. And I'm going to do all those things you just said. Yeah. And what it reminds me of is like people who love having written, but hate writing. Yeah. You know, it is very (laughs) similar to that sort of thing. Like I want to be that perfection version of me that is so great at everything ever in the world. Mm -hmm. The process sucks though. Yeah. I don't know. You have to, you have to derive some kind of satisfaction for the process. If you're going to do it long term. Yeah. It shouldn't just be because you think on paper, these are good things. Mm -hmm. It looks cool. If like I gain 60 pounds of muscle, I'm huge now. I'm just, (laughs) I'm just that on paper. Maybe that sounds like I'll be so strong, but like, should I? I just can't imagine like you in the gym, like just deadlifting me and like, I love this. This is great. I can't, I like being (laughs) like functionally fit and strong. And sure. Some people might think that I should become some, be stronger, make strength a primary goal. But should I, is that really important to me personally, rather than someone else I saw that looked really cool on the internet because they threw a panda I don't know, Martin. What if like, why would they do that? What if like a fire truck runs over Ashley's legs and all you, you know, there's no one around and you have to deadlift it off for, you're going to wish that you had spent first of all, her legs are gone and I'm going to move on from that. From now on, I'm going to (laughs) carry her around on my back like Banjo and Kazooie. She's going to be the bird. And that's, (laughs) that's my life. Well, I mean... I've, uh, that'll be the strength training I need. You are going to get fit from that. So, yeah. all right. So the, the problem will resolve itself, you know? I do. I remember one time when I was a kid, like I was skateboarding and I'd spent all my time skateboarding because I loved it. And one time my dad, my dad's a lifter and he's just like, you know, you should probably spend more time in the gym than learning skateboarding. Like how useful is that skill? You know, if someone ever like got around by a car and you lift weights, you could lift it off of them. <laughs> and you know how many people I've met? who have had a car on top of them in 30 years of life (laughs) is it the answer a lot (laughs) um no the answer is zero i haven't had to lift a a car off of anyone and here's the thing like there are probably not going to be a whole lot of times where there's a car on top of somebody and there aren't like other people around who could come in and help me also lift this car off of someone and like yeah, if I become like I do, I do deadlifts now. So maybe my dad was right all along. Well, now but you can do it. If I'm like, hey, come help me, we're probably going to be able to lift more than if I had just like been training to lift a car off someone myself my whole life. You're not planning on having the strength of you know four people all all by yourself. Yeah, I just I don't feel the need to become the mountain. Yeah, there. I feel like. And I I don't know if this is true. I haven't thought about this until just now. I'll think about it later more. But I wonder how many shoulds are sort of showing you, if you have to use the word should, that that might be someone else's goal. Yeah. Because I don't say I should, like, I don't always say I should make pixel art because I want Mm -hmm. to make the, should I? I don't really know. Is it that beneficial? But I, I'm going to because I want to. Now, I should go to bed on time for my own goal, I suppose. But that's yeah. that's more functional. I feel like a lot of shoulds are secretly not your own goal, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've seen people like, you should, you should post on TikTok. Should I? Should I for me? Or is that because someone else is telling me I should? And why are they telling me I should? Is it because they want to watch me on TikTok or is it because they are giving out business advice for a living and would love to be able to say like, hey, I convinced this guy to start posting on TikTok and here's what happened. Or is it because I see other people doing it and making number go up over there and I'm jealous now? Well, like that's not a reason speaking for to me. a group and maybe to the group it is true. Mm-hmm. But are you the even a part I of that group? It. Did they specifically say you were part of the intended audience for that yeah. message or did you just happen to... Like at the very least, I think if we're finding ourselves using the word should, we should really question should according to whom? Is yeah. it you? Then maybe. 
but a lot yeah. of those shoulds, the, the classic ones, like, you know, the ones I listed reading, being strong, doing, these are just like things that people say are good for everyone. So it feels like mm-hmm. everyone should do all of them. Yeah. I've had people be like, cause I've said pretty publicly before that I don't meditate and don't like meditation. And many times when I've said this, there's always like one person who's like, well, you should meditate because it has these benefits and it makes you more connected to your environment and better able to focus and blah. And yeah, yeah, there's a ton of things out there that have benefits. I should probably be eating tons of beef liver because you know how many vitamins and there are a lot of vitamins. You should have meats. a 100% liver smoothie every morning and it'll I just kind should, of, yeah, it's true. You make you know? your own, but yeah, that sounds gross. I, don't like meditating and I have enough things in my life that fill my hours that I'm perfectly happy with, you know, and I I think I get the benefits of the things I do. And yes, I'm missing out on some things with meditation, but I don't want to do it. And when I, when, when part of my brain goes, you should meditate. It's not because I really want to do it. It's because you're like you said, there's some source of authority out there that has said this is beneficial you being the royal you should do it or maybe even past you maybe Maybe you just behold you you know like maybe one step to being less overwhelmed would also be to be willing to let go Mm -hmm. of things that you do or used to do yeah when i quit my language blog largely because it was hard for me to type due to my hands at the time but that that felt terrible but imagine if i had been keeping that up to now along with everything i'm currently doing i don't want to do that at the same time yeah i'm there are many things that i used to do that i'm not currently doing and past me is no more of an authority over current me than anyone else is Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean this was this was like a key to growing our business because you were around for pretty much the entire ride of me learning to delegate to other people yeah. Since you were you were the first person I ever delegated to with the the design of the College of Book Geek version four website that was finally responsive, that was even hard for me to come to terms with. Like there was a lot of back and forth debate before I ever asked you, where I'm like, Well, I should be learning this. I should learn CSS media queries. I should learn how to design a responsive website. And there was like this <laughs> should in my head. Uh I think I can't remember if I had met I think yeah, I had met Matt. Uh and Matt and other people had tweeted like you know, if you're a true solopreneur, you should know how to code your own website and you should know basically every technical thing ever that you do. And like, I had that DIY ethos, but then I realized, okay, this is complex stuff. Like the web design stuff I've learned has in no way prepared me for this. It's going to take a long time to learn it. And if I do it, I won't write articles. Can't, yeah. can't do both. So I finally delegated to you and Lo and behold, I'm like, well, I have time to write an article and I have time to do the design of the website. I don't have to code it. And then you did a better job than I ever would. And, you know, that was like the first discovery along the path to realizing like when you let go of things, especially when you entrust them to people who are also talented and capable, you don't lose out on the self-worth that you derived through doing it. If you use the time you've gained to go and do something else that you're interested in. And that pushes you forward. Yeah. And it's another thing I have to constantly remind myself of. I didn't think about the fact that like, because of that, you would have had to like really think about whether you wanted that to happen before, you know, to me, the scene starts when I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like a pros pros and cons list somewhere (laughs) out there that was like, he could probably do it. He's not very tall. Like you just had a list. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even think about the fact that you had to convince yourself to do it. Oh yeah. But but yeah, it's hard to, I guess it must've been hard to let go of that. Yeah. Because the whole, I'm doing all of this myself, the design, the coding, it feels like it, it, like it's important. Yeah. The whole thing was my baby. I I derived a lot of pride from the feeling like I had built this entirely myself, which is stupid because anybody building anything is depending on libraries you know, I'm not. Yeah. We stand on the shoulders assembly. Of, of giants with really comfortable shoulders. They have very comfortable shoulders. If you're building a site in WordPress, you're not writing the you know, <laughs> server side code yeah. yourself. You definitely like, relied on other people to do like. <laughs> you just didn't hire people you personally knew, but 
we all benefit from delegation, whether we know it or not, or consciously think about it or not. Uh, um, absolutely. And that's just the story of humanity. The person you know, working at the cafe is a good portion of why I'm able to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. They make your coffee or tea. I don't know what you drink, but you drink something. So yeah, you drink like, something. That's for sure. I guess that's another, maybe another like key to unlocking the ability to let things go and to focus on things is to realize like, even if you pridefully have thought I am a DIYer, I do everything myself. Number one, it's not true. There's always something you're, you're benefiting from that someone else did, whether it's a tool they created for you or a system you get to build on top of whatever it is. Like you're working with other people unconsciously. And the other thing is, again, like when you move on to something else, that's where your self-worth goes. You know, that's where your pride goes. So it, w- it was hard for me every single time. Like the a very recent one was almost completely letting go of editing. That's tough for me. Yeah. Very tough for me. And now like you guys are shooting B-roll too. So I'm not shooting all oh, yeah, B-roll and, and myself anymore. That, that is actually pretty fun to do. But guess what? You guys took great B-roll. That. And I was, I was afforded the time to build this product. <laughs> which never would have happened if I was, you know, shooting B-roll all day. And I spent basically all of yeah. 2020 doing that, editing and shooting B-roll. And, you know, I learned a lot and it was great, but now I want to move on to something else. I can't do those things all day long. If you wanted the B-roll I took, you'd have to wake up at 4.40 a.m. and come to Minneapolis, you know? So like you do that. could not have feasibly <laughs> done that. It would have been set. Well, I guess in order to, you'd have to get here and then wake up at 4 40 a.m. Yeah. is more accurate. Yeah. Like that's just so much more can be done when you're willing to let go of something mm-hmm. because it turns out other people are capable and also that our species has benefited greatly. Get this from working together. I bet you've never even heard of that concept before. What? Crazy. T- together? Society. No, everything on my own. I'm a lone wolf who builds things on internet platforms built by gigantic teams. Yeah. (laughs) Internetwolf.com. I don't know if that's a website. I don't know what that is. Nobody go to that just in case. I feel like if you're coding something, it's easy to, to convince yourself that you're doing it yourself. But like I build notion templates. There ain't, there ain't no tricking myself into thinking I'm doing this on my own. Like it's all this stuff is a giant team made it. And I just get to put it together into a certain configuration. Like, yeah, I'm basically just working with a team. Anyway, um, is there anything else we want to go over? I think we've... Uh, I don't know. I feel like this episode is really more about... Y- you have to explore these questions and mm-hmm. actually address them because n- nothing that we say can be prescriptive about somebody else's priorities. Like, I, There isn't literally a three-step process. Y- you just need to question everything. Or could there be a three-step process? I mean, I, there is if I, if you're willing to do harsh things, like quit everything you've ever done or, or loved go. or didn't love. Just quit everything. Uh, I think it boils down to you should ask yourself what you truly should do. Yeah. And then make your decisions from there. Consider the outside influences, how they compete with what you truly want to do. And uh, I think, you know, most of all, consider those intrinsic values you have, such as living a less fragmented life, having time to learn new things and find a way to codify those, find a way to bring them into the mental battle you go through when a new opportunity has presented itself and you're all excited about the possibilities, what that could bring, you know, find a way to remind yourself, okay, here's what I really care about. How does this all jive? Does it, does it not? Yeah. And do that, and you should have a more focused, fragment free life. Or at least the fragments will be bigger instead of like a million little glass shards. You don't know what's going on. So that's about going to do it for this episode of The Inforium. Uh, the show notes for this one are going to be over at theinforium.com slash 22. So whatever we happened to mention in the show will be over there. I think I mentioned like ultimate tasks and the cold task thing. We mentioned some other things. So those will all be there. Uh, deep work will be there. I talked about that a couple of times. So I'll have Guillerme link that up. And uh, if you like this podcast, well, we are on 
pretty much every podcast platform that you can think of and shake a stick at. I don't know how you shake a stick at a digital podcast platform, but you could probably just shake Angrily. a stick in a general direction. And because of server redundancy throughout the world, you will be shaking a stick at some server containing your podcast platform of choice. Uh, those include Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, all those good platforms. You can search for the Inforium, you'll find it. You can subscribe if you haven't done so already, or just go over to the Inforium.com. We've got some subscription options on the homepage, as well as a link to our RSS feed if you're using some weird, I don't know, like IRC hacked plugin that just requires you to paste in an RSS feed. I don't know what you're doing. Kids these days with their RSS feeds. I can't understand That's them actually anymore. like grandpas these days with their RSS feeds. Kids yeah. these days just have a podcast app or something. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, there is a rating and review feature. So if you want to support the show, you can do that or just simply share it with a friend. Let them know what your favorite episode is. Maybe they'll become a listener as well. We can grow the show that way. But as always, we just appreciate you for hanging out and sticking around for this hour and 15 minute episode, basically. Well, actually, I think we maybe rambled a bit before we started recording. So however long it is. Thanks for hanging out and listening to us for that long. And we'll see you in next week's episode, which is actually two weeks from now. So we'll see you in the two weeks from now episode. Thank you.